I think I was inspired to write the book, The Developing Brain, Birth to Age Eight, uh, with the birth of my grandchildren and the fact that I started my career in early childhood. I taught pre-kindergarten and kindergarten, and um, I experienced um, some schools and some classrooms that I thought, you know, needed some change. I didn't know what that change was. And as I continued my career, went through teaching primary, middle school, and high school, um, I decided that kids were changing. And at the time, we really weren't sure that the brain had anything to do with learning. But as I did research, um, as a survival skill, actually, you know, to deal with inner city kids and not just inner city kids, but actually affluent kids who were, were missing something, who just, I think I'm just a whole child person and started doing research and, um, found brain research to be the key to a lot of the issues that I was facing and other teachers were facing. And as I continued my research, they started going with younger and younger kids. And finally, there was some concrete brain research out there for early childhood. And since that's where we really need to start with all of this, I decided to uh, pursue that track at this, at this time and um, really found that we could follow brain development year by year from birth through age eight, actually, you know, much later. But um, I found that combining that with child development, um, with cognitive psychology, that I could put together a pretty good snapshot of what a child at each age would look like with milestones that, of course, vary because brains are not the same age at the same time, even though chronologically the children are that age. But just um, to give teachers and even parents who are interested an idea of what to look for in their child and what expectations they might have. And, you know, not really what to worry about, but what to look for or be concerned about if children weren't reaching certain milestones within a year or two of that age development. So it was an exciting journey. And I got to interview a lot of children and a lot of teachers. And um, I'm hoping that book will make a difference for them. I think that um, the way I structured the developing brain was, first of all, to give teachers, I believe that we need to know why. So I offer the background. This is what's going on in the brain. These are the possible implications for that growth that's taking place. Um, so these are the, these are for language development, for instance, depending on the background knowledge, um, the environment they've had at home, that will determine perhaps the size of their vocabulary. And to take that information and to know that with some children, and we have classrooms full of diversity these days, that some children, when they walk into your, your pre-kindergarten or your kindergarten classroom and you read them their fir the, the book, the, the first book that you read, that may be the first book that a child has ever heard. And what does that mean? You know, when, when most of us um, have our children, we read the first book within the first week and we're holding that child in our arms and the child is feeling comfort and love and security and then they hear this book. Now, do they understand it? No. But as the days go by, they hear more and more and more books. There's some research that says a child needs to hear a thousand books before they're really ready to read. And in a middle class family, they hear that, those thousand books within a year. But with some children, and whether socioeconomics may not make a difference, some kids do not have a lot of literacy in the home, nor do they have a lot of conversation. So when they get to school, this is really the beginning for them. So how do we make that first book as special to the child at age four or five that was made for the child that was just a month or two old? And I think that, you know, that love that was connected to that first book for most of them, that same kind of compassion and um, caring needs to be present in the classroom 
for those children who are hearing a book for the first time. So it's those kinds of things. What kind of social emotional milestones will they be meeting? And if they're not ready for those milestones, what can we do to get them ready? As social emotional coaches, what, what do we need to do? And as far as memory is concerned, what kinds of things can they hold on to? And how do we present that information so that we can determine whether they really are able to store some memories and retrieve them and in what format?